And what are we doing today? Hey, we're putting in radon systems. Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for the radon mitigators. Those looking to get in the business. So if you're home, of course, you can stay and hang out. If you're looking for a radon mitigator, a good place for you to go be www.nrsv.org. It's right down here. It's that. that is the National Radon Safety Board. Just go to that site, plug in your zip code, and that'll pull up a list of certified radon professionals in your area. So today, we are putting in an oversized high volume radon fan. And at a glance, it doesn't look any different than a regular system, but check out this picture right here. So what you're looking at is a high suction radon fan beside a high volume radon fan. And just look at the huge difference, the inlets and outlets right there. So we, we have to use four inch pipe for everything. Typically, uh, you have a little flexibility between three and four inch pipe down here and uh, your exhaust is usually three inches up here. So what brings these types of systems into play usually is a large footprint of a house, like over 2,500 square feet, just the footprint, not, you know, a lot of people mistakenly think their square footage is finished square feet, bottom and top. We're talking about the footprint of the house, the basement, because that's what we're always treating, right? Well, so the radon levels in this home were extraordinarily high, like they were 57 picocuries. And this is where, uh, and this is not a 2,500 square foot footprint. So why are we doing this? Well, uh, you know, drawing radon out from under a house that you had no part in building is different than, you know, installing a water heater. I have to say this all the time uh, because you know, if I install a water heater, yes, I can guarantee you're gonna have hot water and it'll be 115 degrees if you want it to be. But when you're drawing your radon of a house, it's a different game. And there's all these X factors. And so this is where experience plays a role. I uh, did a house in this neighborhood. It did not have crazy high radon levels, but it was difficult to bring them under four consistently. But the ultimate resolution was to install a high volume radon fan. So when we were presented with this house, based on that experience, right down the street, probably the same builder, I said, hey, this is what happened before. And let's put our best foot forward and just put a high volume radon fan in. And I haven't made any videos. Uh, I've only made like one video that had that featured the high volume radon fan. And it was this oddball video that I made about turning fans upside down to fix a problem. So here we are. I just wanted to show it to you. And the stark difference between it and a regular radon system. And um, you know, it's, that thing's a monster. <laughs> but in the end, you know, nobody really think much about it. But it's just something for you to be on the lookout for and a tool and, and kind of an arrow in your quiver that you might need, especially, you know, if you're becoming a radon mitigator and you need to treat a, a big house that fortunately would have good gravel content. These things, these things can handle like uh, above 2,500 square feet up to like 5,000 square feet or 4,000 square feet, you know, like a monster house. So don't use it very often. We're doing it today. I thought that might be a good opportunity to show it off to you. And uh, we'll have a couple goodies inside to show you as well. Also, um, just some little tips. You wanna to try to keep lumber, a little bit of lumber on your van. So we had this goofy conduit here that was kind of messing us up. And all we did was just, we made a spacer and this is a thing where, you know, little things can become the big things if we didn't have a little bit of lumber to work with us here. And so we were able to get around that and that won't be a biggie at all. All right, so let's go inside and I'll show you what we got going on in there. Okay, so why are we focused on these two bathrooms in the basement? Well, uh, if you watch my videos, I talk about how tub drains or tub shower drains in basements are big opportunities to prevent suction loss. There are also areas where there's basically big holes in homes between the dirt and the bottom floor. So right in here, uh, this is kind of an odd access panel, but we're happy to have it because jackpot found exactly uh, what we thought would be a problem and we'll be able to get access to it and seal it and then over here 
It's just, it's not a tub shower, but it's a, a shower. We opened this up, as you can see. And then right here, we've got, they filled it with sand for some reason, but okay, we'll take it. We'll still fill it too. And just dotting I's and crossing T's, it cannot hurt. Woo! Well, we got, we got a cavern here, pretty much. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay, yeah, so this is some sticky, icky, yucky stuff. Don't drop your phone in it, which I did. Uh, you, don't get to, you don't get to see that, but I've tried to clean it off as best I can. Uh, goof off works well with uh, cleaning this stuff up. Be careful with it. It's, I, I consider it somewhat toxic. Um, any, yeah, so danger, danger, danger. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it works. So does a uh, cleaner, what PVC cleaner helps uh, break this stuff down. You want to think ahead, have a containment solution, gloves, don't wear clothes that you're in love with. Um, so we got number one down, number two, we got that down. And uh, we'll go ahead and button up these access panels that are odd, but I'm really thankful to have them. Okay, yeah. so sealing these areas can and will and have been the difference between bringing a home under four Pico Curies or not. So we were extremely fortunate to have access to these areas and not have to cut them. Um, by the way, just for a frame of reference, our system on this home is right over here in this back corner. And... You know, our plan B, because we always want to be thinking, hey, what happens if we're wrong? What happens if we can't pull this off? Um, our plan B was, well, we would have just brought the system in here and, and brought it in the closet. But we, uh, fortune was smiling upon us today. Uh, so we were able to get it in. You'll see no components of the system inside the home. So we think that's really, really cool. Otherwise, it would have been right there. That'd be the end of the world. Okay, let's go outside. We did extract the gravel from underneath the slab with the shop back. Kind of a weird thing to use outside, but that's what we did and it works great. All right, so there's our switch directly on the other side of that outlet. And we got routed right over here to our fan. And one of the cool things about this job, just the way the land laid and the house was constructed, we were able to get underneath the house by drilling horizontally and there's no components of the system visible inside the house. So that's cool. Some I's that you want to dot and T's that you want to cross when you do that is be on the lookout uh, for the cavities within um, cinder blocks. So as you can see right here, we took special care to fill those in with expanding foam. I seal this freaking hole before we just jam a pipe in it. But I think I got it. And a trick that I use is the same trick that we do at the very tippy top is use this critter guard right here. And, uh, you know, we seal that top in to keep, you know, leaves and debris and stuff from coming into the system, yet allow the system to exhaust. But also use the same stuff to cram it and jam it up in the, the cavities of the um, cinder blocks. And then that will allow the expanding foam to, to hold because that, that is icky, sticky stuff that grips and it kind of needs something to grip onto. And then it expands and it has been working well for us and hopefully it'll help you as well. So um, we got that covered there and then the manometer. So we're moving a good bit of air. So I'm pleased with that. And you know, the system must have a manometer since there's no components on the inside of the home. Uh, this is where we're going to put our manometer and this little trick right here keeps water out of it because if the manometer is outside and you don't do this extra little thing, you're going to get water in it. It's going to get all jacked up and you'll get called back and you don't want that. So all we did was just split the tube in half and this is intended for coaxial cables. And so uh, I just drill a little bitty pilot hole with the smallest bit that we've got and then just tap it on in with a hammer and we're good to go. We're locked in. 
and uh, it allows air to flow so you get accurate readings on your manometer but then it keeps water out so that's been working for us hope it helps you all right i believe that's a wrap high volume fans well hey i hope you found this video helpful if you did by all means press that like button and consider subscribing put out lots of content for the radon community doesn't cost you a dime it means the world to me hey we'll see you in the next video hope you help bye by the way something i think is pretty cool is that this house happens to be on a street that is exactly on the eastern continental divide so what that means is all rain snow creeks and rivers and all that stuff flows to the chesapeake bay out in virginia literally on the other side of the street all that stuff i just said flows all the way to the mississippi river and then goes to the gulf of mexico well i think that's kind of cool anyway all right have a great day thanks for watching bye Thank you, my